Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another of our interviews. This time, it'll be with Marcia Hughes discussing her chapter on conflict and emotional intelligence. This is from our book, The Handbook for Developing Emotional and Social Intelligence. And we'd like to uh, start with, uh, with Marcia giving us a little bit of a description as to what we can uh, expect when we look at this chapter. Well, thank you, James, for uh, asking and for being my partner in all of this. As you know so well, this chapter addresses a real question that both of us had about teams and conflict resolution. Our team instrument, which is known as the TESI, for Team Emotional and Social Intelligence Survey, the TESI has seven key components to it. And what we have found is that for many teams, the lowest score they end up with is in the area of conflict resolution. Most often, if it isn't conflict resolution, it's communications. Those are harder skills than things like having a positive mood or motivated, you know, something like that. They're more difficult skills. So, it is possible to help build a team's conflict resolution skills oh, by, by working with uh, emotional intelligence and social intelligence components? And using the TESI help measure exactly where people are, and where the team is performing, and so you get that sense of now what do we need to focus on? And more than anything, to get the team and the team leader's attention, we do need to focus on this. So, our question was, that this chapter centers around, are two key elements. One is, why is conflict resolution the most difficult skill for teams? The other is, so what? What do we do about it? So tell us a little bit about why you think it's the most difficult. Okay. I have some thoughts on it myself, but I'd like to hear what you, what you see. Well, what we found in the way that I wrote this chapter um, was regarding a concept known as divergent thinking. Divergent thinking means I can think of my way of understanding this problem, this solution, this area, and I'm willing to listen to your way and other team members' ways. So what we found in our hypothesis was that divergent thinking is a much more complex way of thinking and because that's required for good team conflict resolution and it's more complex it would be more difficult so we commissioned research worked with our psychometricians our researchers and indeed found that divergent thinking is a part of the skill of conflict resolution it's much more difficult than something like building positive mood and that's why it's harder for teams now, one of the reasons I think it's harder is because um, doesn't this require a person to be able to value opinions that are different than their own, as well as, to some extent, to be able to, to understand those opinions and those uh, positions, shall we say, cognitively? We really could talk all day about this. I, I believe all of what you're saying is true. I honestly believe, and there's quite a bit of research, that it's a different brain activation process. To be able to literally listen to many different people and hold those ideas as possibilities requires a pretty well-developed way of thinking. So people a certain can, level of uh, tolerating ambiguity is uh, sure. important here. That's, that's another values, ambiguity, thinking process. So we won't go into all the details of that here. We'll just kind of tickle people's interest to go look at the chapter and see the research we have. Good conflict resolution, some of the basis, is we as a team are able to listen to divergent ideas and play with them, promote the different ideas, you know, consider what ifs, and then ultimately come to convergent thinking, bringing it together and settling on one idea, whether it was my particular idea or not. That is really, in many ways, the essence of collaboration listening to the differences with respect, with engagement, bringing it together. So you've got to be able to um, avoid closure prematurely, oh, yeah. all right, in order to get all of the diverse sorts of um, contributions valued in this mix. Right. But then you also have to be able to get to the point where you do come to, uh, to closure and make a decision you can act on. So from our research, we found that some of the ways actually to build conflict resolution skills for a team, start with building positive mood or building emotional awareness of one another because emotional energy becomes a major part 
of the conflict process. Now, we all know that. Um, it can even go into fisticuffs or whatever. But being aware of somebody's emotional energy helps people be able to respond back and forth. So you can start with easier to build skills and then move towards the more difficult ones. Right. The right. easy ones help accomplish the more difficult ones. Absolutely. And to some extent, stress tolerance is going to help you with your conflict sure. resolution. I, I'm sure they, they all fit together in ways that we could, we could name, but that one comes up for me too. For sure. Now, um, the chapter has several very specific ideas of how to work with building conflict resolution, such as spending some time understanding each other's personality styles. That might mean using Myers-Briggs, using Emergenetics. There are other ways of understanding how people think and behave so we can understand, oh, it's not that this person wants to irritate me, it's that they see the world differently. Then if you can add to that how interesting you're into the gold. Absolutely. So, um, I think that's probably enough of a tease for um, our audience. Uh, hopefully you'll take a good look at the chapter and uh, get a sense of some of the work that we do. This is, uh, lies at the heart of our work at Collaborative Growth. If you want to contact us or find out more information, please check www.cgrowth, that's C like cat, G-R-O-W-T-H dot com. And yes. contact or go to www.eiteamsplural.com. Since we've been talking about teams here, that is a focused team website. Absolutely, and that's where you'll find out more information about the TESI. Thank you so much. All right. Bye for now.